can't see it in this slipstream. He's not as fast as me. Rafa number two just won't do. Where's Rafa number one when you need that draft? Bouncing along. I'm trying to keep up with the bees on a mass category start. He who dares wins. It's so steep. It's so steep. Why is it so steep? Flying. Absolutely flying. Cleats, not a problem. Tilt up. Shit. Oh. So this video is my London to Brighton video. I'm a great pretender. This is my third ever bike ride because we're not mentioning the one that I did five years ago. With the exception of that one, I haven't ridden a bike since I was 18. That was 1998. I'm now 44 and I've entered into the London to Brighton bike ride as my third ever ride. <laughs> okay, right, I've arrived at Clapham Common, been dropped off by Tracy, just need to find a start line. Having just been dropped off by my support crew in the form of Tracy and my two teenage daughters, I make my way to the start line for my first ever cycling event. Okay, we're on the start line and we're moving forward. We're just waiting to get going now and the clouds have come over. Now I just want to quickly say, for anyone watching this video without seeing any of my previous cycling videos first, you're missing a treat. I got hundreds of comments on that video about not using cleats. My cleat ability was so bad in that video, I got absolutely nailed for it. And if I do attempt to complete the London to Brighton bike ride wearing cleats, I'm going to die a death. <laughs> and I just want to say, everyone that said that I'm going to fail miserably on the London to Brighton bike ride, I really, really hope you're watching this. That's a bit aggressive. One of the worst things I did was read the comments before attempting this bike ride. If I believed half the things that I was told would happen to me, then I would never have got to the start line. Seven, six, five, four. So it's Zwift. Unlike on Zwift, no one was dropping silly watts to power off the line at the end of the countdown. The countdown was a massive anticlimax. Two, let's power up. <laughs> now we've got the anticlimactic weight of everyone to go. I was a good 100 metres from the start banner and I had to wait for the front cyclist to slowly cross the line. So unfortunately, no 900 watts start for me. Okay, we're getting closer. Start lines. About 100 metres. Here we go. The day of rest, but not for you, legend. No, no, no. Here we go. You start off from London to Brighton. So as I confidently get my feet into the cleats of death before, I shouldn't say that, I shouldn't call them cleats of death because that's opening up people to then go for the cleats again. Guys, the point of this video, I'm not making a video about cleats, I'm not sponsored by Shimano, I have no interest in selling or defending the use of cleats. If you don't want to use them guys, don't use them. And we're off. So, as I confidently get my feet into the cleats, going this slow and I expertly avoid crashing into the start banner, I mark the start of my London to Brighton adventure. Let's do this. So far, so good. 200 metres off the line. Okay, right, I'm trying to try and get some speed up. I'd quite like to do this in a time that I would do it at home. Down here, and I've got to use brakes. Man, there's a lot of people doing this. There's a lot more people than I thought. There's more than at a running event. I suppose it's open to more capabilities. 55 or 54, however far this is, 55 is a lot more achievable on a bike than it is running. So it opens it up to more people, I suppose. Now that we were off of the common and out on partially closed roads, the challenge wasn't London traffic. Okay, here we go, first traffic stop. But more the other riders. Everyone going at their own speed meant that there were bottlenecks and my comfortable pace was slightly faster than most of those around me. Fucking cleats. This was a welcome change to running events. When I say running events, I mean events where you run. It's starting to rain. We're getting some speed up now, which is good. Obviously, it's downhill, so. I'm not blasting it off the start line, but I did want to get a comfortable oh, pace good. up, and I couldn't for quite a while. I know this is a ride and not a race, but I don't want to go slow. I had to make my time up, occasionally overtaking on the right, when there was a safe gap to do so. The rest of the time, I was spent riding at other people's paces because I couldn't get past them. I'm trying to overtake. Not because I'm trying to blast past people, but just some people are going at different paces and I want to keep I want to keep a similar pace up. Absolutely chucking it down now. Great. Right at the beginning. Nice 
The one straight road we were on was closed from the common, but now we were about to join live roads through London. This will be the first time cycling in central London on live roads since 1998 for me. All right, slow right down now, snail's pace. We've joined live roads, so obviously no overtaking. Police car just pulled out in front of us. Oh, third attempt at wearing them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did it uh, last week twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I take off too slow. Good luck anyway. I will say that even with the best of intentions, this chap wasn't filling me with confidence telling me how much he hates cleats. I get it in the comments and now I'm getting it live on the road. I couldn't imagine runners doing this in a marathon. Could you imagine rocking up at a marathon and just after the start line, someone says to you, you're wearing the wrong trainers, mate. <laughs> you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to die a horrific death in a bush. It just wouldn't happen. Wish I could get some speed up. Here we go, another bottleneck. Cleats out. Bus pulling out in front of everyone. <laughs> can you hear me clicking it in and out of my cleats? That's me getting ready to start when I can see an obstacle. I'm feeling a lot more confident. London cycling. I haven't done this in donkey years. I was born and brought up in Bermondsey, South East London, near, born near London Bridge. This car in front picked the wrong day to be going out for a Sunday drive. I'm not going to get anywhere on this road. I'm barely getting anywhere and I'm on a bike. Let's go for it. If this weather's not looking good, I'm not going to lie. These wider roads, I'm starting to get a bit of a pace up. Everyone's cycling along in fours and fives. So my wave was 9.30. I don't know why I had a 9.30 start. No idea. But yeah, so far, so good. So far, so good indeed. As my confidence grew and I sped away from the anti cleat naysayer I was chatting to earlier, I was actually starting to enjoy weaving in and out of the oh, London God. traffic. It genuinely was quite exhilarating. Go. Oh, all going over the pavement apparently. Okay. I didn't want to jinx it, but I was actually enjoying riding through the streets of South East London now. I'm following everyone else because if I don't, I'll get lost. This was the part of the ride I was probably most nervous about because I knew I wouldn't be able to get up any significant pace. Oh, it's a cycle path, it's not pavement. We're okay. Cycle path. Shows my inexperience of cycling through London. Now, there was a small group of cyclists ahead of me. It's the first time on this ride I'm not around 150 other cyclists in my immediate vicinity. Red light. What's the DJ thing on the top? Is that a... The microphone. Oh, right, okay. You yeah. Were quite... oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're going to get wind noise. That's on this bike. Yeah. What are you going to do? Ribble. Ribble CG something, I think. It's my third time ever riding a bike, so you have to excuse me for not knowing. <laughs> Thank you. Now that I felt like we were starting to leave the slower, more congested roads of South East London and into greener and faster roads of Greater London, I had a tactic to keep me honest and keep my pace fresh. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Pace, speed and power. I looked for someone who looked like a decent rider, someone light and someone fast, preferably dressed to impress, as that always is a clear sign of capability. And I would try to stick to their will. Man, traffic lights, change, change, change. At the very least, it made it fun and gave me something to aim for as we left London. This guy looks like he knows what he's doing. His socks are pulled up and sticking in his draft. Oh, I'm being dropped, being dropped, guys. Now, I will say this was a very successful tactic for me. Latch on to riders that look a lot more proficient than me and try to keep to their will. Enjoy the ride. My mate's dropping me. Try and stick with these guys. They look like they know what they're doing. They look like they've got a good time under their belt. When they slow or stop at junctions, then I'll do the same. And when they go for it and overtake, I'll try and match them. Lots of traffic, so easy to catch. Oh, fucking obstacles everywhere. People come in at all sides. It's like one of them computer games where you've got to avoid the old woman and the kid and the cyclist intentionally aiming for you. Oh, car's going left.
I latched onto this guy I named Rafa because that's what it said on the back of his shirt. I'm gonna call him Rafa. That's what it says on his shirt. I'm talking quietly because there's a lot of people around me and I sound like a lunatic talking to camera. Normally I don't care, but I'm talking about them. So, <laughs> sun's out. I've warmed up now. Okay, he's off. Rafa's off. Chill, Rafa, it's wet. So far, so good, guys. So we are, how many K was it? 88, 86, 87, I can't remember. We're now at 73K. I'm gonna count down instead of up. Oh, Rafa's keeping me, uh, keeping me honest. The thing is, when you see guys that look like they know what they're doing, dressed the way you would hope a good cyclist dresses, when you see them slow down and be cautious, you think to yourself, yeah, this is my third ever bike ride. Let's follow their lead. Oh, it's pretty. This is pretty. Slow round the corners. Right, now I've got to catch Rafa, because he never went slow round the corner. He was light, he was like grease lightning and I wanted some of that pacey action. He was like off a shovel uphill. He definitely had a good finish time written all over his streamlined face. Get the old heart rate up, this is. Have a small hill. That's fun. It's okay though, because Rafa took it in his stride. So I need to catch him. He had the featherweight. That was something more than a bump. Well, it was a bump. Oh no, Rafa's getting a gap. Got two seconds, heads up, close the gap. I can see it in my head. Okay, Rafa's gone. Okay, downhill. I've got an advantage now, downhill. Ah, good news, guys. I've caught Rafa. He stopped to help someone. Their chain had come off and they didn't realise it <laughs> going downhill. Tuck in. We're super tucking, boy. Yeah, boy. How much fun is this? Oh my god. Oh. He's powering up the hill. Not dropping me. I just thought I'd sit in your draft. <laughs> but then you powered up the hill and now I'm knackered. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's it. It's starting to rain again, guys. Rafa is a beast up hills. Rafa's gone, guys. I've lost all hope of catching him. That featherweight champion, he's off. He's at the finish line already. He'll start in cleats, hate it. It's all right, I'm past the point of caring. Lovely. <laughs> all right, we're on the main road now. And I think, yeah, London to Brighton's right here. Hill, another hill. I know this event isn't a race and everyone goes at their own pace. It's great to see so many like-minded individuals out exercising, doing something positive, raising money for charity and burning energy. But the feeling of powering up a never ending hill and passing other riders either pedaling or having to walk was a fantastic feeling. Take it from someone who couldn't cycle downhill, let alone uphill, five years ago, to now want to be in a place where he's able to do this was an exhilarating feeling. Tough one, that one. Hey, 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 hey. 
I just want to quickly interject for 10 seconds to say if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to watch the whole thing as a vlog in its entirety with extended edits, unseen footage and without this commentary then I've uploaded that exact video feature length epic to my join and Patreon pages along with other similar exclusive content. Please consider supporting me and becoming a joiner or Patreon. Thank you. Because of the heavy downpour, I removed my non-waterproof mic one-handed, powered up my first real hill test and reached the pit stop, which is roughly 17 miles into the ride. I decided to power through the pit stop. I wasn't tired at all. I didn't need anything to eat as I had only been going for 17 miles and I had plenty of water with me. If I had stopped, it would have been just for the sake of stopping and I didn't need to. I need to get the pace up now. The car just went straight across there. Also, the startways were every 30 minutes and started at 6am, I think. Don't quote me on that. But I know they started really early and each wave had a different colour bib number and everyone was wearing them on their helmets and on the front of their bikes. The start waves are based on the expected finish time you entered when you signed up for the event. The longer the time you expected to finish in, the earlier the start time was for you. This gives you more time to finish the event before the cutoff. Knowing that my start wave was one, if not I think the last, to start, because I'm hugely overconfident in my own ability and I must have put a really good finish time down when I entered, seeing that 90% of the riders around me had a different colour to me meant I'd caught up and passed earlier start waves. It meant I was powering really well through this event. Steep descent apparently. Again, I know this isn't a race, it's a fun ride, but as someone who has always been passed, always been caught, always been in the early ways for every single event he's entered, it's a great feeling knowing that I am now above expectation. I am now above average for this event. I actually think I finished, I haven't checked, but I actually think I finished in the top 20%. I'm gonna cover my finish time at the end of this video. Here we go, steep descent. That's a phenomenal feeling and one that I'm not ashamed to celebrate. It's one I'm not used to and I've worked really hard for it. So thank you Zwift, thank you Wattbike. It was the best investment I have ever made. Just gonna quickly say I'm not sponsored by them so I'm gonna calm down on the free endorsement. However, Zwift, Wattbike, I am open to offers. I'm flying, I'm flying. I'm staying on the brakes because I've got people in front of me. This is definitely a super tuck hill but the wind is in my face. So all the more reason super tuck through the puddles. Okay, uphill now. What goes down must come up. Hello. Hello. Slow it down. Hills are fun. Except people break at the bottom. I don't understand that. But like you're leveling out, you're going fast down. Whoa. Nearly, I shouldn't really undertake, but they're all chatting on the right. I thought there was a big group. They are a big group. I don't know what she was indicating for. There's no left turn. Man, I was going fast then. Break, 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 break in the road. That's how worried they are about the hill. Ambulance station at the bottom of that hill. That was fun, man. Hills are fun, going up them and coming back down. That was fast though. That's the fastest thing I've ever been on a bike. <sighs> I'm feeling really good. Sit rep, I feel fantastic. Ah, oh, hill, here we go. To be fair, my legs and especially my posterior felt really good. I had zero aching or numbness, which I'm thanking Zwift for and my Watt bike, the training I do on it indoors. Bike fits are massively overrated. I've already covered the cleats, so you guys can't really comment about the cleats, so I thought I'd put something in there that you can have a go at me about. Bike fits are overrated. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why I do this to myself. I'm, I'm literally saying it. I don't even believe it. I'm literally saying it for fun. That's fun. Another steep hill. Okay, main load now. The other great thing 
was that we were waved through on red lights, junctions, crossings, etc. on the closed roads. Of course, you have to observe the rules on the open roads. And even then, if the roads were empty, there were stewards there waving us through red lights and crossings to keep the flow going. If we all stopped in mass, the route from London to Brighton would have been a complete gridlock and no one would have got anywhere. Especially when we came into Brighton towards the end, everyone was just waving us through. So, um, yeah, I felt really sorry for some motorists out on that day. Right, guys, I'm going to say now, closed roads are the way to go. A bit hair-raising coming out of London, because none of those roads were closed, and Londoners don't give a f I should know, I used to be one. Just bouncing along. Get my cadence up. Flying. Absolutely flying. Cleats, not a problem. I am now, officially, the master of cleats. I am now the king of sting. Counter Monte Cristo when it comes to cleats. That's me, baby. Famous last words, because I've still got over halfway to go. Where are we? 57K. 57K left. That's nothing. I was a bit nervy about this, because this is massively out of my comfort zone. I'm doing a London to Brighton with cleats on a ribble bike that's cost me an arm and a leg. Filming it. I'm living the dream. The sun's out. My hair's flowing and I'm wearing Lycra. Who wouldn't be happy? Come on, what a hobby. If my last couple of cycling videos didn't get the point across, let me be blunt, I've caught the cycling bug. I love it, especially hill climbing. However, I haven't hit Ditchland Beacon yet, which is what you're all saying in your heads now. I can hear you saying it. That's a different story. You right, guys? Guys, look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. The further I got into this ride, the more my confidence grew and grew. I felt strong and I knew I had bags of endurance left in me to finish this race. Look at this. Out of the saddle, middle of the road. He who dares wins. I was looking forward to the hills as they made for a bit of fun and I could get out of the saddle giving my backside a break. It broke up the ride. All of this thanks to Cat Dion Zwift. Okay, guys, we've got another long hill. Oh, yeah. That's extra watts there. These hills, there's loads of them. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my God. Sorry, coming through. Sorry, guys, can I just squeeze through? Can I squeeze through? Walking four along. Now this was one thing that was really, really annoying. They did this on every single hill. Riders congregating right in the middle of the road at the top of every climb, congratulating each other, commiserating each other. At least I'm getting better at bobbing and weaving my way through stationary riders. So Alp to Zwift. Now it was at this point, mentioning Alp to Zwift, that I did wonder why my gears didn't go lower or higher. I can never remember which way round I mean when I say that. Basically why I couldn't get them to get easier on the climb. All the hills so far I'd climbed in a harder gear than I really wanted to. It was a lot harder than using my Watt bike on Zwift. That's my only real benchmark that I can compare it to. 55k left to go. Tilt up. Oh, pothole. You have to say super tuck, right? When you do a super tuck, yeah? It's the rules, isn't it? That's what you do. I love it. Absolutely love it. Several weights come past. Oh, shit. How steep is this? This is fast. This is too fast. Is that possible? To do that thing where I lie on my saddle. Like that guy on that meme. What race? Who was that who did that? Lay on his saddle. How good is this? Oh, it's getting steeper, guys. How good is this? You can really feel that wind when you sit up. If I go like this, I am sleek like an arrow. Go up here, I'm like a sailboat. I'm virtually going backwards. I don't know why I'm coasting. This is where I can get speed up. This is where all the hours on out to Zwift pays dividends. I'm too tired to say super tuck. Okay, super tuck. This is fast, guys. Lunatic. Oh, so good. Sun's out now. Lovely day. I'm really warm. Okay, we've got another hill to climb. 
climb. This is so much fun. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't believe how quick we're going. Someone's just stacked it. Also, looking at the melee of bikes and bodies trying to get in and out of the entrance to each of the checkpoints and pit stops. That's a lot of cyclists. Which they were using for refreshment and medical tents. I'm pleased I didn't waste any time trying to fight my way through that crowd. I mean, it was mental. Just went past a checkpoint. There must be 500 cyclists. It feels good knowing that I'm able to complete this challenge carrying everything I need to get to the end, feeling really good and still relatively strong. Knowing that I don't need to rely on the organizers providing me with food and water. I've got no interest in stopping for a beer, which is what everyone seemed to be doing. So I'm gonna crack on. The last thing I wanna eat now is a burger and chips at these pit stops. So I kept my head down, stayed to the right of the cones and powered on. That's 50K left. What's that, nearly 40K done? Oh man, <clears throat> pothole. Flying guys, absolutely flying fun. I tell you something funny, I keep finding myself sitting in people's draft like on Zwift, like really close. And then when I think they move to let me pass, and I don't, I don't pass, I just stick there thinking, no, you do the pull. <laughs> what I will say is these cleats make a huge difference, especially on the climbs. I'm so pleased I've, per I've um, persevered and used them. And I didn't switch to something, you know, more convenient, but it really does feel like it's made it, like I can pull my feet up and straight back down again. If anything, I feel really confident on them. It's hope I stay that way as things progress. Still on closed roads as we come into, I don't know where we're coming into, I'm making out I know where I am, I don't know where I am. No idea. Thank you. Problem is when the road's this wet, all you get is the spray of the bike in front. I know, <laughs> I know, but luckily we missed the shower. Yeah, we've missed the shower, but we've got the puddles. Good luck on the hills, guys. Thank you. <laughs> have you guys done this before? Uh, no, me. No, yeah. you have. Do you know where the big climb is? Right, okay. Closer to the end? Yeah, it's like the last hill. Right, okay. Is that what it's called? All right, nice one. Thanks, mate. I forgot there's a big climb. I just remembered. Ditchlin Beacon. I don't know how big it is but everyone talks about it, so it must be huge. <laughs> this is a spoiler. This Ditchland Beacon climb is massive. Biggest thing I've ever climbed in real life, and it's yet still to come. It's bloody massive. Guys, I lost my old Rafa, but I found a new one. Rafa number two. I can sit in this slipstream. Oh, I can't sit in this slipstream. He's not as fast as me. Oh man, Rafa number two just won't do. Where's Rafa number one when you need that draft? I'm trying to keep up with the bees on a mass category start. Who am I kidding? I can't keep up with the seas. I'm killing it on the hills though. The people I'm passing on the hills, absolutely killing it. Then as we were cycling through closed roads, the marshals were allowing cars to use those closed roads that worked and lived on those roads. And a driver sh cut straight across a group of cyclists just in front of me. They turned left without indicating sharply, nearly causing a crash with one other rider hitting his brakes so hard that his back wheel had to come off the floor. He was nearly in the passenger seat with the driver. Car just turned left without indicating, nearly hit this guy. He's better at cleats than me. Good thing you're good at cleats. Oh, no, that's close Jesus. I'd have hit him. No, 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 no indicator. And the closed roads are done now. Little mini super tuck, I like it. Thank you. <laughs> it's getting wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get off my seat for a second. I know, I know what you mean. Take advantage. to cross the road. I then hit the next checkpoint. It takes me a moment to work out what's happening. I've never seen so many cyclists in one place before. The more 
checkpoints I pass, the less I want to enter them. They're like a bloodbath. Oh, no, it's a checkpoint. It must be crazy in there. As some cyclists were leaving their five, six, seven grand bikes on the side of the road. I assume they're five or six or so. I have no idea. On the side of the road when they went in for their beer, pie or wee, whatever they were doing. <laughs> Then someone shouted my name from somewhere in the melee of the checkpoint. I only heard it in edit. I wasn't intentionally ignoring them at the time. I genuinely never heard it. Here we go. It's what dreams are made of. Yeah. I'm too tired to super tuck, guys. Okay. And we're back up the climb again. Oh, oh God. Hilly route this, isn't it? Now, <laughs> yeah, good, Joe. Yeah. I knew you were doing it. I was on the week. You know, <laughs> I'm it just breezed off past me. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah, smash it. One of my subscribers. That's really cool. Okay, guys, you're going to like this one. Please bear in mind, as I say this, this is my third ever bike ride as an adult. So now with having 33k left to go and having already completed 54k of this route, I suddenly discover that the gears on the right make climbing easier, right as you look at it. I'm probably a glutton for punishment putting this in the video, but it's what happened. So here it is as it happened in real life. I've just realised that the left gears make it easier uphill. <laughs> so I'm going to test it. Yeah. Oh my God. Left gear. I haven't used it the whole time. And I've got... 33k left to go. Bloody hell, right. Back up to the big, big ring, is it called? I don't know what it's called. It felt like I had discovered an IRL power-up that helped me climb hills easier. I genuinely discovered gears that made it easier to climb hills. <laughs> I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. It's why I do events like this. They're a learning curve. I've learnt more in the last 40k than I have cycling around any industrial state, which is all safe and sanitised. You have to learn under these circumstances whilst I'm in a bush. This is exactly why I enter into events like this. I enter these events to take me out of my comfort zone. Smashing it, we're on for a good time. Cycling from London to Brighton as my third ever bike ride as an adult is a real, real hard challenge. A hard challenge that I see enormous value in over coming not only from a fitness perspective but probably more so from a psychological and knowledge perspective i learned more from cycling 87k over this course than i would have if i had followed 99 percent of the comments on my last video trust me okay that's the third or fourth checkpoint i can't quite remember i think it's yeah i'm not sure third or fourth checkpoint i'm not stopping i mean to be fair that one wasn't a pub on the plow on. I feel good, I feel all right. Now I know that most of the comments on my last video meant well, but I don't want to use mountain bike pedals or flat pedals or twisty pedals and cycle around in circles on an abandoned retail park at 5 a.m. on a Sunday morning to get used to them. I couldn't think of anything worse. Sometimes the easiest way isn't always the best way. Except, having said that, I haven't yet reached Ditchland Beacon. 32k left to go. Okay, this is where I get to use my newly found special gear it's like i've uncovered a power up okay all right here we go let's try it out Hang on. here we go and there oh look what's that about up a steep hill oh chilling guys chilling <laughs> give me a break oh man I'm done with these hills. Yeah, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Ah, so left. Wet feet. 25k. That's nothing. I'll have a drink. Celebratory drink. I now have less than 25k to the finish line and a very, very big climb between me and Glory. 24k left to go. I've just stopped for something to eat. I'm going to change the battery and then I'm going to go. I will say the marshal and organisers were great. The event felt very safe and very well organised. Credit to them, especially this guy who stopped this impatient motorist. Wait, 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 wait. Right, go now, but this road is closed. You can't come down here again. Oh, you're being reported to the police, sir. 
Okay guys, I just saw a sign for Ditchlin. That sign can only mean one thing. Big old hill. I love the song. Never ending story. Story. Where am I going? Downhill. We're going to power into this guy's Zwift Star. Okay, 40 miles we've done. 40 miles, that's mental. In the blink of an eye. And what goes up must come down. Yee, weave. Oh, shit, this car. <laughs> okay, 20k left. 20k left to go. And we've just reached the refreshment tent. So checkpoint, That's probably the last checkpoint. I will say that they had loads of checkpoints and refreshment medical pit stops throughout this whole course. So many I lost count and this wasn't even the last one. I've been on ultra running events, ultra running events over 100K with less pit stops than at this event. I don't need to stop, I've got water and I've had a saurine bar, so I'm all good. I've had some calories. I feel fantastic, I feel really, really good. I'm loving these cleats. They're making a huge difference. I made sure that I ate more than enough before starting this ride, bulking on high carb supplements to give me the fuel I need. And I have a plan for recovery afterwards in the form of fish and chips, vegan fish and chips, spelt with a PH, and a large ice cream in Brighton with my family. Perfect recovery food. I don't need to eat anything now and I still have enough water to finish the course. I brought plenty of water with me. I will say for anyone who hasn't done anything like this, it's not about distance when it comes to planning sustenance. Trust me, I'm very good at doing long distance events and knowing how to fuel a very, very big frame. What are they doing? Was that a person in a wheelchair going down the middle of the road? I'm not imagining it. No, it's pretty empty, don't you? <laughs> not sure why. No, I thought I was tired. So I to imagine things. Woo Woo this is a hilly course, I will give it that. I will say that for you, London and Brighton. You are a hilly course. It's not about planning sustenance for distance, it's about planning for time on your feet or in the saddle in this instance. Really tired, guys. I expect to complete this in under five hours. That was my plan. So I don't need to eat anything during with the exception of a saurine bar if I plan to eat well beforehand. It's also about energy used. I'm feeling really good so I can keep going. I'm not in zone four or zone five, so I'm not burning more energy than I would do normally. I don't know if you can hear me over the wind because I'm going downhill, but I've decided to take it chill now, take it easy because I can see what looks like a massive hill in the distance, huge. If I was running for four or five hours, that's a different story. Marathon distance time for me, that is. And then I'll take a couple of energy gels to keep me going because I would be burning through my energy stores, but I don't need a hot dog at a checkpoint. Use my body like a sow, slow me down. And we have got 14K to the finish line. This is very much the calm before the storm as the oncoming vengeful Ditchland Beacon Hill looms over us. The GoPro just doesn't do it justice. This thing looks steep and I wasn't, I wasn't yet at the bottom. Hills don't bother me. Hills on a bike in cleats is a different story. Uh oh. That looks a bit hilly, doesn't it? I like it. The size of that. But I had a game plan. Power into it and use my newly achieved or discovered easier gear setting. The calm before the storm. Okay, we're here. I can see the start. The beacon, Ditchland Beacon, the hill itself, is a 100 metre climb and it's 2.7 metres in length. It has a 100 metre section that's over 12% in gradient and it averages 6.2. There's a 100 metre section that's over 12%. I didn't know this going into it, which I'm really pleased about. I only know it now because I Googled it. Okay, I'm going to die. I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Yeah, press play. This hill isn't messing about, and either I'm going to destroy it or it's going to destroy me. Cast your bets now. Let's do this. Okay, my right, cameras are called in, legs are turning. Let's have a drink. Can you beat the beacon? Okay, flux capacitor is fluxing, and 
Oh. Shit. Oh. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Yeah, all good. Thanks, mate. That's right. Okay, guys. Oh, I've had my first fall with the bike ride and I've only got flipping 13K left. My chain froze, just stopped. I haven't even tested it, actually. Let me quickly test it. I barely passed the banners that mark the start of the beacon. I didn't even hit the start of the incline and I fell off the bike. All right, we're okay. We're okay. I had no reason to fall off the bike here other than the fact that I ballsed up my gear change. As I changed gear, it got caught or froze. I'm not 100% sure, but I couldn't turn the pedals and you saw the rest. My gears just froze. Luckily for me, only another 500 riders or so were around me to watch this fall. I wasn't hurt, just badly damaged ego. Do you know how long it goes on for, the climb? About a mile. A mile? Yeah. That was a little bit further than I hope you'd say there. Yeah. It's worth it though. Yeah, yeah. On the other side. I'm going to tackle it. All right. Thanks, man. Good luck to you. I'm on the small gear now, taking it easy. My arm and hip are killing me. <laughs> My own fault. My own fault. Let's do this. Get some pace up and keep it up. But this new biking hobby has given me such a battering recently that I'm getting used to falling. I'm starting to think that my hips are made of titanium. He's probably not gonna watch this, but thank you to the man that stopped to help me. Sorry I fell in front of you. Also, thanks for the woman who gave me a small yelp as I fell. Oh, that did amuse my kids in edit. Now you may ask, Ryan, why do you include this footage based on your last video where you got loads of comments from non cleat using cyclists that now feel vindicated because you've had a fall? <sighs> aye, aye, aye. Oh, it's getting steeper. I've included it because these cleats are not the mistake. These cleats are not the cause of the fall. I'm still learning. This is my third ever bike ride and I am smashing it. You right there, guys? Yeah. Smashing it. Doing well. My confidence level has gone through the roof on the back of this ride. I'm gonna get up this climb and overcome this and this really hard challenge. It's all part of my journey. Why is it so steep? Oh. 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 Hello, mate. Thanks, man. How are you finding the Good. Uh, yeah, alright. This hill's a bit tough. Oh, mate. Oh, yeah. What's your name? Oh, ben. Ben, nice to meet you, Ben. Go on, lads. Go on. I can't even talk. Just keep going. <laughs> Just do it. You're killing it. Look, you're nearly there. Have pain. you done it the whole way? Yeah. Oh, well done. Putting me to shame. Smashed it. It wasn't the Zwift style speed and power attempt I was hoping for. More of a nervy, heavy breathing, high intensity, slow wobble I was trying to avoid when I first started the climb. Nevertheless, I got to the top and was now able to enjoy the long descent into Brighton that I had heard so much about. And another checkpoint. I passed another checkpoint. Another. I thought the last one was the last checkpoint. They've got more checkpoints than border crossings. I've lost count. There were so many. Is that the checkpoint? Sorry. Is that the checkpoint? Yeah. Oh. Nice view though. Yeah. Makes it almost worth climbing that hill. 
here we go, I can see, I can see Brighton. Okay, 10K, nothing. But this bike has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Touch wood, I mean, I've still got 10K left to go, so. Ribble, if you wanna send me free stuff, I am open to all offers. I love this bike. This bike is so fast. Some duck! Yeah, boy! This makes up for falling over. So we're coming into Brighton. This is Brighton town centre, and then obviously we just need to get to the seafront. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. This is the seaside. Ah, oh, I can see the finish line. Let's see if I can spot my family. There we go, Lucy, Sebastian, Richard, Chris, and Ryan. Congratulations, seagulls. And Ryan, congratulations, seagulls. He's wearing a Brighton top, seagulls. He's wearing a Brighton top, seagulls. Can you see that? Those are seagulls they've eaten for them. Hey, my family. I mean, the seagulls down here. I'm all hyped. Ah, oh, done it. I'm at the seaside. Oh, yes. Oh, cleat. Left my cleat in. Right, cleats are good. It's all good. I made it. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. Guys, that's the end of this video, or well, that's the end of my commentary. I completed this in exactly four hours and 28 minutes. Daddy. You all right? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Enjoy. Really good, yeah. Do you want to see what I bought myself? What'd you buy? I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your support. Please give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Leave me your experiences. If you completed London to Brighton, please tell me in the comments. Tell me how well you did. Tell me the things that you enjoyed. Tell me the things you didn't enjoy. And and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. See you in next week's video. London to Brighton, done. I'm at the beach. I made it to Brighton. Really enjoyed that. Smashed it. Right, we're going to go home now. Are we going to get chips? Yeah, we're going to get fish and chips. An ice cream. An ice cream. Okay. Chips and ice cream. Just a whippy ice cream. I'm done. I'm going to go and eat my body weight in chips. Sit on the stones. We're going to sit on the stones today. Yeah. Going to get chips. Have I mentioned we're getting chips?